master set you free. Let the master bring his peace to you. The God made this your foundation. How Jesus loved and taught. Welcome again to Jesus is the Answer Ministries broadcast. I'm Pastor Robert Scales. And I tell y'all, we've been chewing on this word this week now. I pray that you all do what I ask you to do. And that is watch your words for the next two weeks on all the warning coming out of your mouth. Because it is not Jesus. He is not your shepherd if you're living in want. Jesus Christ has provided all things for us. And it's nothing that you could ever want in life that Jesus Christ has not already accomplished, finished, and done for us. Amen. And we thank God for that. Now, I want to teach you uh, uh, today. I'm going to start really the next three days. You know, on Fridays, I pray for you. But I, I want to begin to, to, to get in a little bit more <clears throat> of want. There's so many more people in the Bible wanting, and God never blessed them. Um, if you read here in Psalm 23, this is our text. The Lord is my shepherd, the Lord Jesus. And as I've been quoting this for over 20 some years, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He, and see, see you, you'll begin to see, he maketh me to lay down in green path. He uh, leadeth me beside still water. See, it's always him when he shall shepherd. Uh, he restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Now, now catch this now. He leadeth me in the path. See, I, I never have nothing. I don't, I don't tell Jesus what to do. See, he tells me. <clears throat> when, when you're telling him what you want, what you want to do, you got your dreams, your goals, uh, you, you might not go very far with him. But if you find out what his will and purpose is, spend time in, with him in, in prayer and in the word, <clears throat> when you hear his voice and he tell you what to do, that'll be blessed eternally. So, so he restores my soul. He leadeth me. No, not me lead him. See, Jesus ain't your shepherd. When you're trying to lead him, you you got all these ideas about what you want in life. Uh, you, you're, you're setting your heart after things, going after things that the Lord ain't told you to do. All you're headed for is a bunch of pain, misery, disappointment, discouragement, a bunch of unnecessary tears because you're wanting. Wanting always <clears throat> will bring distress, anxiety. It'll bring unbelief. Wanting brings fear. Uh, wanting brings strife, unforgiveness discouragement. A lot of people who who got hurt by somebody <clears throat> and they, they might not even hurt you. You just got hurt by your want because you were wanting. Uh, you were wanting them to do something different than what they did. But if you had been letting Jesus lead and guide you, you, you never would have went there. And so Jesus restores our soul he leadeth us in the path of righteousness. And look, look now, see, Jesus, I've heard preachers say, and, 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 you know, I'm not naming a number, but I'm going to tear up their doctrine. You know, the Lord is leading me like Job to lose everything. Now, hold on now. David said the Lord leadeth us in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. God didn't lead Job down that path. The thing Job, Job 3.25 led him there, the thing he feared the most. Came up on him. See, Job was wanting uh, uh, his children not to be judged. Got him in fear. Got him in doubt. Got him in unbelief. Then you go to verse four in in Psalm twenty three. Now listen at this part. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Now you ever notice? Yea, though you walk. Yea, though I walk. Whenever I'm in a valley and shadow of death, the Lord ain't in. He don't lead me into fear. Jesus never leads me into trouble. He never leads me into depression. He never leads me into woe. 
He never leads me into stress. He never leads me, leads me into evil problem. Jesus is the answer. Hallelujah. He, he's the power of God. I mean, he already know everything. How can he lead me in a problem? Jesus can lead me somewhere where problems are, but he always gives us the answer. The Lord told us in John 14, 14, whatever you ask in my name, that will I do. I will do it. And so he, he's into doing for us. He's into leading and guiding us. He, he's into to, uh, bringing us the will of God. But whenever we walk through the valley, if you ever notice in, in verse 4 of Psalm 23, he quits saying he. It goes to I. Yea, though I. And you know, I don't know why preachers will not make people accountable for making wrong choices. We got a devil. And, 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 and he steals, kills, and destroys. And why can't we uh, acknowledge when we made the wrong choice? Jesus said you will know a tree by fruit. Well, why can't when we have ugly fruit know that we made an ugly and bad decision? Why when we have bad and evil fruit we blame the Lord? But Jesus said, a good man bringeth forth that which is good. An evil man bring forth that which is evil. What are you bringing for? And so when we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, the Lord even tell us when we mess up, when we have made the wrong decision, the wrong choice, we don't open the door for the enemy. He tells us to fear not. To fear no evil, because he, 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 thou art with me. So Jesus, when when he's your shepherd, saints, he don't just abandon us because we get in trouble, because we come short, because we we are weak in the flesh. No, he told the apostle Paul when he was as weak as you could get, a uh, uh, praying that that thorn leaving. He said, Jesus said, my grace is sufficient. Listen to these words. They're astounding. For my strength. Oh, there, there, there is he bringing something to you. My strength is made perfect in your weakness. Did you get that? See, see Jesus want to bring something to our weaknesses. He want to bring his love and power and forgiveness to our sins. He want to deliver us from the power of darkness. He's always, every day, looking if he'll find somebody that'll yield to him to bring you wisdom, to bring you righteousness, to bring you sanctification, to bring you holiness, to bring you redemption. Jesus is looking for us to live in a way in faith in him where he is able to bring us his life, his peace, his joy, his strength, his wisdom. He's not looking for me to try to produce this in my life. He's looking for me to be yielded to him, to be submitted to him, that, that he can bring this in my life. Hallelujah. And so they go, I walk through the night. See, that? see, the Lord doesn't quit. See, he still want us to know he will be with us in trouble. He will deliver us. And you can read in Psalm 91, the key to that is you know his character and authority. You know Jesus as your Lord and as your shepherd, as your savior. Therefore, you're not living in want. When you're living in want, you are upset. Let me show you the Bible. A woman, I'm telling you, in Luke 10, we closed with this yesterday. Let's go back and begin to work on her. In Luke chapter 10, verse 38. I left off yesterday here because I didn't have time, but I, I want to take my time and, and work this. Now it came to pass, as they as, as they went, that Jesus entered into a certain village. And a certain woman named Martha received him in her house. I mean, just welcome Jesus wholeheartedly. You know, you can be the nicest person, serve, give, 
and still be troubled about many things. We have that example of Martha. But Martha was in coming about with much serving. And she came to Jesus and said, Lord, do it not thou not care? See, she wanted Jesus to care about her care. She wasn't trusting Jesus. Let me show you what Jesus wants from every born again believer. This is what Jesus wants. And if you don't do this, he's not your shepherd. You might believe in him. You might have, you might have received him in your heart. Uh, but, but he's not your shepherd. It's a great big difference when Jesus Christ is your shepherd. Jesus, this woman said, Lord, do it thou not care that my sister have left me to serve alone. You, you always uh, uh, wanting Jesus to care about what's wrong in your life instead of telling you what to do, leading and guiding you in the path of righteousness, renewing your mind to the way that Jesus and what he want to do in your life. And she said, Lord, do you not care that my sister have left me to serve alone? Be her, therefore, that she helped me. Now, look what she's doing. She does not begin to want to tell Jesus what to do. She, she, she is totally on the devil's turf. And she's now ordering Jesus and, 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 and not allowing him to lead and guide her. Let me, let me show you what Jesus answered her. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things, many things. Many Christians, born again believers, are troubled about many things. And they don't even they don't even recognize it. They're caring. I just wish the Lord would do this. Well, I just wish this would change. Well, I just want everything to work out okay. It's not. That's not trusting Jesus. That's not letting Jesus be your Lord and Shepherd. And then he goes, Jesus went in verse 42 of Luke 10 and said, but one thing is needful. And Mary has chosen that good part, which should not be taken away from her. And that is sitting at Jesus feet or sitting at his word in the New Testament and letting him speak to you. Letting Jesus teach you his ways, his word. His commands, his sayings. Uh, Jesus came to give us life. And God wants us in a place where uh, we, we have no other options for Jesus. As uh, you remember all those disciples in John 6 that left Jesus. Jesus told them, you have to eat of my flesh, drink of my blood. They said, this is hard to hear. Well, it really wasn't. You had to believe it. And, and, and Jesus said, it's the spirit that quickened the flesh, profit nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. And so uh, Jesus, when all those disciples left Jesus, he turned and looked at the twelve and said, will you go also? And Peter looked and said, now, this is the way you and I got to be every day. Whenever we are faced with the decision of who we going to follow, where are we going to go? The, the only words that come out of our mouth is, well, where are we going to go? Jesus is the only one that got the words of eternal life. He's got the answers to all our problems. He's got the wisdom to every situation we face. He has the power uh, that, that he was tempted in every point, yet without seeing. Jesus Christ overcame the world. And you can, you can see it in, in, in the scriptures. In John 16, 33, that Jesus uh, uh, did not tell us to believe that we can, we can win. He did not tell us to believe that we can overcome stuff. What Jesus taught us in John 16, 33, go read it yourself. That in me you will have peace. In the world, you're going to have tribulation, tests and trial, frustrations. They're coming to all of us. But Jesus said these astounding words, be of good cheer. Why? I have overcome the world. He's not trying to get you to believe you can win. He wants you to believe he did. He wants you to believe he won so you can trust him to show you how. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's good news. That's good news. Man, I can hear that 24 hours a day. 
Why? Because that keeps me focused on trusting him and not wanting things in my life to work out. When Jesus is running the ship, everything will be all right. Amen. Now back to Luke 10. I want to read you this in the, in the Amplified Bible. Verse 41 and 42. Jesus, but the Lord replied to Martha by saying, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things. You know, I know many people in the church like this. They, they do good deeds. They help out. They work hard. But they're troubled about many things. And, and Martha, Martha was cooking for them, serving, fixing a big meal. And she wanted everybody, she wanted Mary to, to stop sitting at Jesus' feet and come in there and help her. And then she went and told Jesus to bid her to do it. And now she's wanting because she's commanding Jesus uh, 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 to try to uh, make somebody do something to make her life better. And Jesus just ain't going to do that. He, he needs to lead and guide you into all truth. People uh, get so hurt because... They get involved emotionally and get involved in things in ways that Jesus never was leading and guiding them to do. And then you become blaming people. You you start finding fault with people. You start hearing from the devil all the time when you live in that want. Jesus said there is need of, in verse 42 in the Amplified Bible, there is need of only one and but a few things. Mary has chosen the good portion of, which is to her advantage, which should not be taken away from her. So we have to we have to get and learn that what's to our advantage is when we sit at Jesus' feet. When, when, what, what Mary was doing was letting Jesus be her shepherd. Hallelujah. And and when you when you let Jesus be your shepherd, let, let me tell you what, what, what you're gonna start walking in. You're gonna start losing questions. And start living in answers. See, people get, get they, they 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 live in that realm of questions. See, you're living in the soulless realm. Jesus is in the realm of the spirit, where the answers are, where peace is. Because when you get Jesus peace, you have answers. You even have peace to not worry about this, because the Lord is going to take care of that for you. And so, when 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 you're not in that peace, you're in the womb. And Jesus taught us in John 14, 27, that, that uh, uh, the peace I leave with you, my peace I give you, not as the world give I unto thee. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. When, when is your heart going to be troubled? When you're wanting. When you're wanting. Now let, let's get ready to close over here in James chapter 1, verse 2. And this is astounding, what I'm getting ready to teach y'all. I'm probably... I'm going to teach you this the next couple of days uh, because you, I just believe this needs to be expounded on. In James 1 verse 2 it says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Really, in the Greek, it's uh, diverse tests and trials. We need to understand, saints, uh, that we are going to encounter Test and trials. I don't care how much you trust the Lord. I don't care how much you you sincere. I don't care how many times how faithful you are in church and faithful to read your Bible, faithful to do what Jesus tells you. Those that live godly will suffer persecution. You're going to get tests and trials. And so knowing this, in verse three, that the trial of your faith worketh patience. And let me give you a definition of this word patience. It is the quality that does not surrender to circumstances, nor succumbs under trials or tests. When, 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 whenever you trust the Lord and you say, I'm trusting the Lord, that, that faith that you have that's saying, I trust the Lord, has to have patience behind it. Faith and patience always work together. And your patience is, is not, not you just saying, I trust the Lord, but your patience is you're not going to succumb to what this feel like, what this look like, what this is saying to your mind, what this is a uh, 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 look like it ain't going to change. You are succumbing only to Jesus 
and what he did when he was on this earth. And then the Bible said, but let patience have her perfect work. Did you ever notice it never said, let faith have its patient work. But we know faith and patience work together. So the Bible tells us to let patience, let the quality that does not surrender the circumstances have her perfect work in your life. That, that you are standing up on the word, you have made up your mind that God's word is true, and what God says is true against everything you feel, everything you see, everything you hear, it, it, that you have made up your mind that you're going to stand on God's word till you see that promise come through. So let patience have a perfect work. Now get this part. That you may be perfect and entire. Now here it is. Wanting nothing. Wanting nothing. Hallelujah. Did you get that? See, God, God wants us Christians to live every day where we're wanting nothing. We're wanting nothing. Why? We're trusting the Lord for it. I remember over in um, uh, Proverbs, and I'm going to pick this back up tomorrow because I, I ain't got time to, to, to expound on this deeper. But in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5, now listen to this carefully, and we'll, we'll get ready to wrap it up. See, when you let patience, when you let your faith in Christ Jesus, in his love for you, what he did for you, what he provided for you, when you let your faith work and your patience where you don't succumb. See, a lot of people say, I, I'm trusting the Lord for this, but they don't have patience. They don't have the quality that don't succumb to something coming telling you this ain't going to work. God's not going to come through. Jesus ain't going to be able to do this for us. And so when we, when we, when we let patience have a perfect work, you will be, you will be perfect, you will be entire, and you will want nothing. You will want nothing. Now, now, if you go on to verse 5, I'm going to go and read a little bit of this. If any of you like wisdom, now I've heard people preach this, uh, uh, just stop there at verse 5 and say, if y'all like wisdom, but really what, he, what James by the Spirit, what the Holy Spirit is telling us, if you lack wisdom concerning patience, if you lack wisdom concerning your test and trial, how to trust the Lord in it. Did you get that? See, a lot of times, saints, people are trying their best to trust God when they should be asking the Lord for wisdom how to trust Him. So if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who giveth liberty and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that waveth like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed, let not that man think he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. There's hundreds of thousands of times over 20-some years I have, I have sought the Lord for wisdom how to make it through tests and trials. And so in Proverbs, we'll close with this. In Proverbs 3, verse 5 through 7, uh, the scripture said, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart and, and lean not to your own. Really, when you lean into your own understanding, you lean into what you want, what you feel, what things look like, your ability and your strength. You're leaning to that. And, and, and the Bible teaches us to trust in the Lord what he can do and lean not to your own understanding. Now get verse 6 and 7. In all thy ways. I mean the pastor scale. All, all you Pastor Scale, you mean to tell me that you are you are teaching us from the word of God that we pose to in all our ways acknowledge the Lord so we ain't talking about what we want. Yes. See, see, this is why people don't walk in this. They don't acknowledge the Lord in all their ways. The Bible said, the Bible said, in all thy ways, acknowledge Jesus is your shepherd. Jesus Christ of Nazareth is your Lord. Acknowledge him in all your ways. 
Forget this. And he will direct your path. Be not wise in your own eyes. When you're wise, you, you just keep on thinking you're going to be all right in game. Fear the Lord, respect him, and depart from him. Amen. Well, my time is up, but I'm going to get back into this tomorrow and just keep on teaching you. Just add a little bit more every day. Well, I want to make available to you the sixth series, uh, The Lord is My Shepherd, I Shall Not Want. On the screen is our address, also my book, God's Grace Explained, will absolutely change your life. And uh, if you if you order the CDs, I'll send you a free copy of my book. Just ask for it, God's Grace Explained. And I tell you, this book has been changing people's lives, uh, absolutely setting people free, helping them. And so order that today. The book is $10, and uh, and uh, we do our best to make it as affordable as we can so that people's lives can be changed. Make your check and money order Jesus and some ministries. Post office box 292-112, Nashville, Tennessee, 37229. And we'll, we'll get them right out. As soon as you send them, we'll get them right out. We'll get our staff to get that out to you. And we know there'll be a tremendous blessing to you. Also, I want to invite you all to Jesus Answer Church. On the screen is our address, 332 West Main Street, Watertown, Tennessee. And I tell you, the glory of God manifests in the church. We have people drive three hours every week, hour. Um, and people just coming from all a lot of parts of Tennessee uh, because of the word, because of the anointing, because of the spirit of God. It is absolutely phenomenal. And you will be so blessed. So I invite you to come. A church that's alive is worth the drive. Amen. And you'll be tremendously blessed. Also, I want to thank my partners and my friends. Thank you so much um, for your financial support. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you, saints, for taking time praying. I know the broadcast has been a blessing to you. And you that it's been a blessing to, you pray. Consider about being a partner with me monthly. Or uh, uh, just sow it into the ministry. Uh, let God speak to you. Uh, desire that the Lord speak to you. And don't don't be wanting to give to, to the ministry. Uh, trust the Lord. And uh, he'll provide for you. Amen. And so thank you, my friends and partners. Thank you for helping us. Well, my prayer for you, saints, is that you will know the love of Christ that passes knowledge. And be filled with all the fullness of God. From Jesus, his answer ministries, I'm Pastor Robert Stills. Remember, saying, the Lord Jesus gave us a new commandment that we live in how he loved us on the cross. Live that love to everybody and watch the blessings of the Lord be on you. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.